Hello there guys. Today I'm going to be watercoloring and chatting with you in this brand new watercolor sketchbook that I got from Marteza and using these new set of 60 watercolors and I'm still getting used to these paints and I'm also getting used to just sketchbooking again in general and so today is just a relaxing sketchbook session. The first thing I did was picked my palette. I picked a handful of paints because when you have 60 paints you can't use them all <laughs> and it's kind of like a cool and really calming color palette. It all kind of reminds me of a cucumber since it is pretty hot around here and the blue agave is kind of the embodiment of cool around here in Texas and in a lot of the desert landscapes. It holds a lot of water and I wanted that to come across when I painted it. And I drew this agave outside on plein air. So I was sitting in front of the real agave and this makes a big difference for me actually. I don't know if you guys feel this way, but I feel like I capture the life in living things so much better when I have a real subject. This allows me to actually check out a little bit when I'm painting this and um, just kind of let my instincts guide me. I have chosen a color palette that has both pastel colors and also some darker tones so they kind of balance each other out and play off of each other or accent each other, I suppose you could say. Although the sketch is semi-realistic, I want the colors and the way that I paint the cactus to be a little bit more whimsical and more sort of just playing around, like almost a color by number in my sketchbook. It's a really nice way for me to wind down when I'm not actually using the logical part of my brain and the rational part of my brain and sometimes when you are painting and trying to figure something out at the same time you end up switching into that and so I wanted to avoid that with this cactus and just go into pure zen mode. I am starting to work with Arteza, who is paying me to create a weekly series of videos using their art supplies. So this is the preface. They will officially start next week, but for this video, I wanted to really experiment and just get to know their watercolors a little bit. I am going to be doing a series of watercolor 101s as part of these videos, so just going over the basic techniques and lots of techniques and also kind of how I approach my watercolor painting. And before I did that, I wanted to do the due diligence of really knowing these paints and understanding them for their uniqueness. So as I have mentioned before, Arteza watercolors are a cost-effective range, so they are not that expensive. 
And because of that, they have more filler than a higher grade watercolor, like a schminke, for example. So what that means is they are less vibrant because the pigment is really what makes the watercolors so vibrant and sort of gives them their translucence. And the more filler you add, the less translucent the watercolor becomes and the more it starts to act like gouache. So this is why, in my experience, I find these watercolors to be a really interesting sort of hybrid between a watercolor and a gouache. If you are trying to go for vibrancy or saturation of color, you know, really sort of big, bold colors, these may not be the right paints for you, but for me, they are a really interesting addition to what I already have in the mix. I'm going through a really kind of soft pastel period with my artwork. I'm just loving the sort of soft tones right now. And these watercolors offer a lot of pastel options. And for another, I am getting into gouache for the very first time. So yeah, this, it's, it's kind of interesting to use these watercolors and get to know them. And as you see, what I'm doing is I am treating some fronds with more opacity. And there you get more of a gouache-like effect and I'm using more of a traditional watercolor technique, a wet on wet technique for some other fronds like the two that you see on the left hand side. What I will say is blending wise, it is more difficult to get a really sort of a cohesive blend with these you do get some gradation and i have just embraced that and, and i am okay with that because again it's important to use your materials for what they're good at and to not try to make them into something that they're not and i think for me what i'm loving about painting with these is genuinely the variation of color that you get in having 60 paints at your disposal. And I'm, I'm trying to play up that and also just kind of bounce between using them as watercolors and using them as gouaches. And I'm excited um, to get to know them a little bit better. And one of the principles behind this Zen painting sketchbook practice is releasing judgment over um, the piece and just painting without thinking about too much about what it's gonna look like at the end. You know, I film myself painting a lot and my experience watching it back versus my experience when I'm actually painting is so vastly different. When I watch it back, there's rarely ever a time where I'm harshly judging the piece and, and uh, wanting to, you know, get rid of it. And 
When I paint, very often there is a very uncomfortable part in the middle, especially if I'm doing something new that's not quite tried and true, and I don't quite know what it's going to look like at the end. I go through a phase where I, I really kind of don't like it. And I almost want to stop and start again instead of continue and keep going. And um, the releasing expectations of how it should look at, at any point in time until it's finished is really, it's part of the Zen philosophy and it's what I'm trying to integrate um, to practice in painting and to break myself of the habit of judging myself and judging my painting so harshly and this certainly applies to this agave there was a long period of time in the middle where I really wasn't digging it so much now that I look back on it I genuinely like it and I don't even see that in the piece anymore so you know And for the finishing touch, I go in and I add some accents on some of the select fronds. I did want to do that to ground the piece a little bit and also to accentuate one of the inherent beauties in the agave other than color are these beautiful organic flowing lines that you can only get in nature. And so I wanted to add um, a little bit of an accent and draw your eye into those. Hope that you have enjoyed this Zen watercolor and chat and I will be talking to you again next week and so until then TTFN